Welcome to Movie Recall. In today's video, we'll be going through the 2017 horror thriller film, The Babysitter. It's time to recall, let's get started. Turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. Cole is a 12-year-old boy who is an awkward kid. In their school district, he refuses to let the nurse give him a flu shot. Cole is afraid of needles, which gives the school nurse a difficult time. He gets constantly bullied by his schoolmates as he is a nerd. Melanie is one of the only people who treat Cole nicely. She accompanies Cole in school and they are good friends. Melanie's father arrives to pick her up from school. She asks her father if they could give Cole a ride home, but her father is unwilling to do so. On their block, three kids on their bikes approach Cole to intimidate him and make fun of him. When Cole acts uninterested, one of the kids, Jeremy, pushes him to the ground and calls him a weirdo while the others laugh. Someone from a distance calls them out. It is B, a beautiful young woman who defends him from the three bullies. She warns Jeremy not to bother Cole again as she pins a hole in Jeremy's tire. This scares him off and they flee. B is his babysitter, who is one of his closest friends. She checks up on Cole and makes sure that he is not physically hurt. B takes Cole on a drive home and asks about how his parents are doing. He says that B only hangs out with him because she gets paid to do so. However, B assures him that she has a great time with Cole regardless and makes him blush. As they arrive home, B reminds Cole that they will see each other again tomorrow night because his parents plan on going on a trip. He sees Melanie next door and they wave at each other. He looks for his mother and catches her in the backyard fixing traps for rats and other bugs. Cole tells his mother that people call him names at school. She consoles him by saying that things in life are scary when people are young. She assures him that things will get much better when he gets older. In an empty driving space, Cole's father lets him drive to give him lessons. Cole cowardly admits that he is not ready and too scared to accelerate the car. His father understands and takes over. Cole seems to have a good relationship with his parents. His mother and father are both laid back and are unlike other parents. He enters their room to have a conversation with them, but they are both busy. His father is binge watching Mad Men while his mother has paperwork. That night, he goes to his room to open his laptop and watch Mad Men. This is in hopes that he could connect with his father on a deeper level. Cole does not sleep and watches the show until morning. On the bus to school, Cole tells Melanie that he feels like his parents do not like him and they take every chance they get to avoid being with him, thus the frequent trips without him. Melanie tells Cole that she thinks B brings boys over whenever Cole falls asleep. He gets curious and tells Melanie that he will stay up all night to test their theory. That afternoon, Cole spies on B. He sees her by a mini-mart with another guy. They flirt with each other and seem happy. This sparks jealousy in Cole, and he just stares at them until someone hits him with a soccer ball. Later that day, Cole's parents rush as they get ready to leave. They remind Cole of the things that he can and can't do while they are away. The doorbell rings and his mother asks him to get it as it is probably B. Cole fixes his shirt before making his way to the front door to welcome his babysitter. They both greet each other with their own handshake. Cole's parents continue to head outside and go about their getaway. B and Cole have a night of dancing. They set up lights as if the house is a nightclub. They also swim in the pool and basically have a good time together. While making dinner, B and Cole talk about spaceships. These are the rare moments when Cole feels like someone is listening and can relate to the stuff he is interested in. They continue to joke about each other and after, they decide to have a movie night in the yard. A projector flashes the movie on a wider screen and both of them take turns reenacting the movie. They go inside the house and crash on the couch. B teases Cole on liking Melanie, but he is in complete denial. It's time for bed, but Cole says that he's not tired. B decides to let him take a shot so he could fall asleep faster. He asks her to take a shot with him. She agrees and heads back to the kitchen for her shot. While B is out of sight, Cole pours the shot on a vase. As B returns, he coughs and pretends that he already drank it. Cole is now in his room pretending that he's already tired and going to bed. He calls Melanie and discusses their plan to spy on what B will do while he sleeps. B enters the room to ask if Cole needs anything. He asks her for being so nice to him and treating him like he is normal. They continue to have a short but significant conversation about how it is acceptable to be weird. They both say goodnight, so B leaves the room. Half an hour later, the doorbell rings. Melanie encourages him to go see what B gets up to after he goes to sleep. He quietly sneaks out of the room and crawls towards the staircase to see what is going on. He sees B and several of her high school friends, Max, Allison, John, Sonia, and Samuel. Among the group, Samuel seems to be the odd one out. He just got invited by B when they were together at the Mini Mart. They are all playing a game of truth or dare formatted as a game of spin the bottle. The bottle points at B during that round. 
Max dares her to kiss everyone in the room. First, she gives Max a quick kiss on the lips. Next, she and Allison have a steamy session that takes everyone by surprise. Entertained by this, Cole continues to watch from upstairs. John does not receive a kiss from B, and they all laugh. She kisses Sonia on the forehead, then proceeds to Samuel. He refuses to kiss B because he does not want anyone looking. He is overwhelmed by the people he just met. B finally kisses him. After a few moments, she brutally shoves two knives into his skull and kills him. B tells him that he is helping them fulfill a greater purpose. From upstairs, Cole's face fills with utter disbelief. He could not process what he is seeing. The group then opens up a big box to retrieve a book. The book is ancient and delicate, which contains verses that they will use for the ritual. B says that they should start as soon as possible so they could head upstairs and get the blood of the innocent. Upon hearing it, Cole gasps, realizing that he will also be used as a human sacrifice. He hyperventilates and tries to call 911. He reaches the police and informs them that a lifeless guy is in his living room. He finds a pocket knife in his room as a weapon of self-defense. However, he hears the group approach his room, so he pretends to be asleep. Cole hears that Sonia will use a syringe to extract blood from him. He panics, but he is unable to move as he has no choice but to be still. They hold his arm and insert the needle, but they miss the vein on the first try. They make the second attempt and are successful. B tucks him in bed, but notices the open window in his room. As soon as they exit, Cole gets up to make a makeshift rope out of his blankets. He rushes to combine the sheets before they return to his room. Ready to climb out the window, B finds out that he is wide awake. However, he falls unconscious after losing some blood. Cole wakes up in their living room and is tied to a chair. B and her friends gather in front of him. Sonia feeds him a cookie under B's command. Her cult questions Cole while fending off his questions by saying they needed his blood for a science project. She says that it is helpful to maintain his sugar levels after fainting. They interrogate him, asking about the window and the sheets. Cole says that he was just trying to sneak out so he could smoke outside, but the group is unconvinced. While they converse, Cole tries to cut the rope using the pocket knife from earlier. Unfortunately, a mirror is behind him and the group can see his reflection trying to escape. They make fun of him and joke around about his determination to go. B decides to let him go and instructs Sonia to untie him. Before going near Cole, police vehicles arrive and put the group in a panic. B becomes agitated and asks Cole if he was the one who called the cops and if he saw the Samuel incident. He calls out for help, so Max kicks him to shut him up. Two police officers kick the door open and order everyone to freeze. Max throws a sharp object at one of the officers and kills him. The injured officer accidentally pulls the trigger. The bullet hits Allison and she is thrown across the room. As John begs the other officer not to shoot him, B comes from behind and slits the officer's neck. The other officers from the station contact the now dead cops through the radio. The group struggles with coming up with what to say because they are not familiar with cop codes. They ask Cole, he gives 1053, but B thinks that it's a trap. She asks him again and he says 10-4. They get a sigh of relief as the officers on the radio say all clear. Allison suffers because of the bullet wounds at the corner, but the group refuses to call an ambulance as it will put them in a critical position. While the rest of them deal with Allison, Cole finds the perfect opportunity to run. He rushes upstairs while John chases him. Cole pushes him, John slips because of a toy car and falls from the second floor and dies. Now that one of them is dead, the group gets more agitated towards Cole. He runs to his room and climbs out the window. Unfortunately, Max gets to him and pulls the sheets to get a hold of him. Without a choice, Cole lets go and falls to the ground. He manages to run to the garage and hide under a car while Max is hunting him down. There, he looks for valuable tools that he can use to protect himself. In an old toolbox, he finds a firework rocket and comes up with a plan. He re-enters the house through the crawl space where his mother keeps multiple traps for pests. Sonia suspects that Cole is inside. She opens it and enters. He remains still under a thin blanket and holds his breath strictly to prevent any noise. Sonia points the flashlight in Cole's direction. She touches a spider that is right above him. At this point, Cole is terrified, but Sonia decides to leave as she finds nothing. She crawls back to the way out. Cole flicks the spider away and the trap catches it, causing a noise. Sonia notices it and makes her way back to the young boy. He points the firework at her, but misses. Sonia's hands are caught by the mouse traps, which bids time for Cole to get out. He traps her in the basement and ignites a firework rocket with bug spray, burning her to death. The explosion throws Cole across the garden. Max chases Cole outside the house. Cole manages to trip him and kick his private part, causing him extreme pain. Max gets up and strangles the boy. 
Gasping for air, both of them notice a sound. Cole tells Max that Jeremy, who is his bully, is throwing eggs at his house. Jeremy dances as he enjoys making fun of Cole. After showing appreciation for Cole's ingenuity and urging him to start standing up for himself, Max pushes him to confront Jeremy. Cole threatens Jeremy that he will kick him. He awkwardly throws a kick but fails miserably. In return, Jeremy punches him to the ground. Cole explains that a group of teenagers are trying to kill him and that cops have died inside his house. Although his desperate remarks, Jeremy just cracks an egg into his head. Max helps him up, but Cole punches him. Max chases Cole up a treehouse. When he is about to strangle him to death, the treehouse is too old, causing it to collapse. Max is killed when he falls and is hanged by the rope swing. Cole looks at his body in shock and hears a gunshot. Cole escapes to Melanie's house and explains to her the situation. She informs him that her dad is not around and they are now alone in the house. B follows him and opens the doors with ease. She observes the house while looking for signs of them. Both of them manage to stay quiet and wait for a clear signal to move elsewhere. While hiding in a room, Cole apologizes to Melanie for dragging her into this situation and assures her that he will take care of things. He asks Melanie to call the police, then she kisses Cole before he leaves. They both smile for a split second despite the situation that they are in. Cole returns to his house, but it is completely dark and empty. He tries to stay silent while walking around the house. He finds Allison pretending to be dead. He makes sure that she is not breathing by looking at her intently and checking if she still breathes. He makes his way to the kitchen and finds the gigantic book. Suddenly, Allison attacks him from behind, but he punches her bullet wound so she gets off him. She continues to go after him using a knife. Before she can stab him, B kills her with a cop's shotgun. Allison's blood is now all over Cole's face. He threatens B that he will burn the book, which is very important to her. B nervously approaches him out of concern for the book. B confesses to Cole that she was once insecure and meek like him until she made a deal with the devil to get whatever she wanted by sacrificing innocent people and spilling their pure blood on an ancient book while reciting its verses. Since then, B has been traveling from different places to prey on young boys like him. Although she offers to let him join her cult and tell the cops that they are innocent, Cole refuses and burns the spell book anyway. This time, B's charms do not work on him anymore. He runs to Melanie's house to take her dad's car. He drives it recklessly into his house while B is distracted by the burning book. The vehicle crashes directly into her. Cole climbs out of the wrecked car. They have one last emotional farewell as they reminisce about their friendship. B initiates to do their handshake, but Cole leaves her to die alone. The police officers and firefighters arrive at the house for rescue operations. His parents come home and rush to embrace him. He tells his parents that he no longer needs a babysitter anymore. Moments later, B attacks a firefighter going through the house. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.